Guys, the price of silver is up about 10% since my video a week ago when I said it was lagging gold and inflation. You're welcome. So is that all it takes to get the price of silver to move 10%? If that's the case, I guess I should do like nine more videos on why silver has not been a good investment so I can get the price back up to $50 an ounce. But all kidding aside, there's a very strange thing going on in the gold and silver market, and even the so-called experts are confused. Now, if you remember, in 2022, silver was about $25, but the premiums ran as high as 80 to 100% over the spot price for silver eagles, and were very elevated for other types of silver as well. So the premiums were going wild, but the spot price barely moved. Now, you would expect if everybody was so desperate to own silver at any price, you would think the world price would be increasing a lot, but it didn't. And now we actually have the opposite situation. There are many retail investors now dumping a lot of their gold and silver maybe to pay bills or for other reasons, or it reached the price level that they were hoping for. Because of this, many coin dealers on YouTube have been talking about the collapse in premiums in both gold and silver to the point of some gold being bought under spot and selling for spot or just around that price, or in some cases, just buying it under spot and selling it right to the refineries because they're getting way more sellers than they are buyers. And the same is true for silver. The premiums are very low. And in some cases, they're not even bothering to try to sell it. They just send it right to the refinery or the wholesaler that gives them maybe a few percentage points under spot or spot. So how is this possible that the premiums are dropping and dealers are reporting having five times the dollar volume of sellers versus buyers, yet gold and silver are going significantly higher in price. Now, obviously there's some much bigger buyers out there or a lot of different types of buyers are all now seeing the light and getting into metals. So let's see who that might be and why they are choosing to buy now all of a sudden. Now, this doesn't happen a lot in investing, but when it does, you should pay attention to it. And that is when a stock or gold or something goes up without any so-called reason that anybody can figure out or there's no news about it. There is always a reason. It is just not yet understood or the news has not come out yet. And so when these moves happen that are the opposite of the general consensus of the market, they could be pretty long lasting or pretty powerful. So the kind of consensus in the market about gold and silver is that if interest rates go lower, then it will be a boost to gold and silver because gold doesn't give a yield. So the lower the interest rates, the more attractive gold is. But interest rates have not come down yet, and the Fed has already been backtracking about how many times they're going to lower interest rates, and the price of oil is going up. So that is heating up inflation to the point where there may be fewer interest rate cuts, or if inflation starts heating up more, who knows, they might even have to raise rates, and that would be a negative for gold. And yet, for some reason, Gold doesn't care about all of that, and it's making new highs. So that's something to pay attention to. So let's see who some of these buyers might be and why. So some of the financial news is saying that the price is going up because central banks around the world are buying more gold. So here's a chart of between 1992 and 2022, how much gold net purchases central banks have been buying. And you see from 92 to about 2008, they were net sellers. And from 2008 on, they've been net buyers. With 2022, they have bought almost double what they bought in, say, a few years earlier. 
But the biggest buyers are Russia, China, Turkey, India, Kazakhstan, Thailand, Poland. No mention of the UK, the US, any of these people. And these numbers, in my mind, are probably suspect because if you view the West as your enemy, why would you tell them exactly how many ounces of gold or tons of gold you bought every year? You would probably try to hide that for as long as you can because you don't want to tip your hand of how strong your economy is or your reserves are. So even Bloomberg doesn't have a definitive answer on who is buying all this gold for it to be rallying like it is. So gravity defying rally has confused season analysts and they have a more current chart going into 2024 for central bank gold purchases. And so they were net sellers in only three months out of the last two years. So yes, yeah, central banks are definitely buying and China's central bank is one of the biggest buyers out there. But the Chinese consumer is also a pretty big buyer normally. But now with China's home prices sliding and their stock market down over the last few years, there may be a lot more Chinese buyers of gold using the money that they may have been putting into real estate or the stock market. They're saying, hey, these things are going down. So I don't want to put my money into something that's going to lose. So they may be upping their purchases of gold. So that could definitely be one of the factors along with the central banks. Now, Indians like gold as much as or maybe more than the Chinese. Are they buying a lot of gold? According to this article, they say that Indians are notoriously price sensitive to the gold price. And it says local prices are trading at a discount to the international price, which has deepened from 35 to 40 below. In short, Indian dealers are at odds with Chinese buyers. Meanwhile, the West continues to offload. So if gold gets a little too expensive for Indians, they buy less of it. And as you see, the prices are falling over there below spot. So there's not a lot of retail demand just like we're seeing in the US. So if they're not buying physical gold and silver in the US, maybe they're just buying the gold and silver ETFs, but that is not the case. So this black line are the tons of gold allegedly <laughs> held in the spider gold ETF. And you see it has peaked around 1900 tons and now it is around 1500 tons so as the price of gold here in the red has been going up they have been losing gold from their etf so it is not from people buying the etf as opposed to physical bars and coins so bloomberg is saying by looking at the futures market and the over the counters market they're saying that trading activity is rising sharply, signaling that the usual institutional buyers, central banks, as well as investment banks, pension funds, sovereign wealth funds are involved. And even option activity is picking up and the open interest on New York futures gold has been rising, a sign that longer term bets by money managers are on the upswing. So these charts show the dollar value of the volume traded every day in billions of dollars. And you see they jumped from about 50 to about 100 billion on total exchanges and the over the counter from about 100 billion to about 125 billion. And the funny thing is they pick three days to buy their gold, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So you see this chart here, most of the buying is coming on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And Bloomberg says it's because they are reacting to key U.S. data that usually comes out on those days. But that data has been coming in hot, which would mean either no interest rate cuts or even interest rate increases, which is not good for buying gold. So it is the opposite of what a gold buyer would want to see in these reports. So they say here, that would be a negative for gold because high interest rates dent bullion's appeal relative to yield bearing assets such as bonds. 
So they're saying that some investors might be buying the gold because of the prospect of a hard landing in the U.S. economy based on the recent data and rushing to buy bullion for its role as a haven. So the head of commodity strategy at Saxo Bank sums it up saying the rally is defying a lot of normal thinking, especially when it comes to still elevated rates. I think the narrative is changing towards sticky inflation and perhaps a hard landing spiced with a lot of geopolitical uncertainty and deglobalization driving central bank demand. So it's not retail buying that is causing these higher prices here. Just one look at Atmex website and you see you can buy a one ounce Krugerrand for only 19 99 over the spot price, normally $79.99. So there are still sales on gold and silver. The premium has not picked up, yet the price is really jumping a lot in a short period of time. And another possible reason for the increase in the price of gold that Bloomberg did not touch on is that countries may be wanting to de-dollarize their reserves because of what happened to Russia's reserves when this war started. So the U.S. and other countries froze about $300 billion of Russia's $600 billion or so of reserves. And so that's a new precedent where if you don't like a country or they don't do something you like, that you can just confiscate all of their reserves in your banks. Countries that may be friendly with the U.S. now are now second guessing that, hey, what if we do something the U.S. deems uh, something that they don't like in the future and they do the same to us? So if they get rid of their dollars and get into gold and keep it in their country, that's something that the U.S. or the EU or somebody else cannot confiscate because you do something that they don't like. Now add to that what's going on with Hamas and Israel and Iran and the Russia and Ukraine war and all of that. There might be some people sniffing out or have some inside information that this might expand into a bigger war or, you know, the, the big third war, so to speak, or something along those lines. Maybe somebody has some information on what's coming out. And so that usually gets leaked to big insiders or banks or rich people or whatever, and they may buy ahead of that. Who knows? So now, what should you do with this information that gold is making new highs and silver is breaking out of the range it's been in for the last four or five years or so? Well, if you've been holding a long time and are considering selling some or all of your gold or silver, do not listen to the experts because they always move their target past the peak price. And what does that mean? They never say, hey, gold just hit 2,500. This is as high as it's gonna go. Everybody should sell here. No, they never do that. If gold gets to 2,500, they're gonna say 2,700 is the target. And if it gets to 2,700, they're gonna say $3,000 is the target. Uh, the same thing happened with oil in 2014 when it went to like 140. Goldman Sachs came out and said, oh, it's going to 200. And that was the top right there. And it collapsed by like, I don't know, 80, 90, 80 percent or so. So they never get it right. They always overshoot. And so don't use their targets as gospel. Uh, have your own targets in mind based on what you needed for, what you paid for it, or whatever things you have going on in your life. Now, one thing to remember, gold has no overhang supply, meaning this is a new high. Nobody has ever bought gold higher than this price and are regretting it and are waiting for it to get back to break even to get out. Silver has a lot of overhead supply. So if you watch silver and you see how well it breaks some of these levels, like $30 is probably a big level with a lot of people that bought somewhere around that level. Even when the silver price was lower, they might have paid a premium, and so they're in at $30 or even more, $35. And so a lot of people will say, oh, well, I'm gonna wait till it gets to this price, uh, my break even, I'm sick of holding on to this thing, it's done nothing, and when it gets there, I'm gonna sell it and get out of it. But what usually happens is you sell at that break even price and then it goes a lot higher, right? Has that ever happened to you in stocks? 
Um, I'm sure it happened to a lot of people because I've seen it myself. You buy a stock, it goes down and it doesn't do nothing for a few years. And finally, when it gets back up to your break even, you sell it and it skyrockets 100%, right? So in my mind, I'm not so much watching the price levels. I think that if we get to some levels that retail people or even many first time new retail buyers start getting interested in buying silver and gold and you see it all over the news uh, and premiums actually start to get crazy while the price goes up, then that may be a good time to sell some or trade your silver out for gold. If the gold to silver ratio gets a lot lower, like say towards 70 or 60 or so. Uh, personally, I don't think the gold silver ratio will ever get back to like 16 that we've had in the past. So if I see 70 or 60, depending on how fast the silver price is moving, I may <laughs> consider that good enough and maybe swap out into gold or something. So guys, what is your price target for gold and silver? And what is your plan if it hits those targets? Will you sell all, some, or swap one metal for another? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, guys. Thank you.